well, Willie Lynch, Willie Lynch talked about that, and that's something that has been practiced and mastered is to take away from the so-called slaves, the lost sheep, the black sheep of the family, the so-called um, Africans that were enslaved in the West and the Americas and the Caribbean, to take away from us the ability to both read and write the language of Masa, Masa's language, so-called English language, as well as to suppress any true knowledge of our own language because he didn't want us to understand his language properly as well as want us to forget our own language, the language, whatever forms of language that different tribes had when they were brought over here from West Africa. And scriptures also speaks about the language too, the importance of language, and it also makes a connection with Ethiopia. And we want to go through some of these scriptures right here so one can understand how important it is um, not to be lost in translation. Lost in translation. Many, many ones are lost in translation. They may say, well, the Bible is the same whether in English or in any other language, but then it's not so much the answers, but it's the right questions. So if you say that, our question is, how do you know? In other words, if you only can read English and you've only bothered to, to just trust the King James Version of the Bible, how do you know? When Christ said, you shall know the truth, he didn't say, well, you should know the truth in English, and if you learn the truth in English, then you learn the truth everywhere. He, that, that's not there. That is, that is a bad interpolation, you understand, or a bad interpolation as it were. But let's go to Zephaniah. Let's go to Zephaniah chapter 3. In Zephaniah chapter 3, it speaks about the judgment of the nations, the judgment of the nations. This is this particular so-called 2012 hype and this last day's end of the world hype is really about the judgment of the nations or the judgment of the Gentiles or the judgment of the Anglo-Europeans. People say, oh, why are you pointing them out? Well, they're the ones who are running the present world system. So now if we put the Bible into its proper context and we put world events into its proper context, then we are in the right time at the right time. And here in Zephaniah chapter 3, verses, um, let's begin with verse 8. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith Yahweh, saith Yod hey wow hey until the day that I rise up to the prey, the prey, not to pray, but to the prey, like a lion rises up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. And the first thing that comes to eye and I heart and mind is thinking about Rastafari and Kadamawi Haile Selassie and those days that preceded World War II and His Majesty's prophetic statements and what the nations did, how they turned their backs on Ethiopia and how His Majesty's prophetic word came to pass, that the match was struck in Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and then the flames burnt Europe. This reminds me of this, the League of Nations, the Gathering of the Nations, and the United Nations, and Ethiopia's role in that particular matter. But moreover, people say, well, yeah, okay, you're saying Ethiopia, because you're Rastafari, and that's why you're saying that. But get back to the Bible. So let's get back to the Bible. Verse 9 says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language, the people, and say all people, the people, particular people, that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh or yod heh wah -Hey, the, quote, Lord, end quote, to serve him with one consent, to serve him with one consent. Verse 10, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, wait, wait, from beyond the rivers of, this say, America? No, 
did it say Europe? Did it say Asia? It said Ethiopia. And one time, the whole continent of Africa was known as Ethiopia. So from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, the rivers of Ethiopia, so when we look at a map of Africa, and in particular East Africa, we can see the rivers of Ethiopia and the different parts of the river of Ethiopia and different tributaries of the rivers of Ethiopia. So this is accurate. So the pure language or the purified language, we also make the positive claim in this particular document that that's the royal Amharic. And we prove that. Now some people say, well, Amharic is not the pure language because it's not the first language. Full. When it says pure language, that's saying first language. Says they already had a language which was already before that. So he would turn to them a pure language. For example, gold. If you find some, some iron ore, right, and, or, or, or some gold in some rock before it's processed, right, you have to do what? You have to put it in a furnace of fire in order to purify it. Is it the first form of it that you found, the raw form of it? No, you had to purify. So purification is a process. And we go into some more of that within this particular document, Ethiopia First Language as well. We just want to make a scriptural connection with both Ethiopic, the first language, as well as the pure language of the Royal Amharic of the Met of Kedus of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So here in, in Zephaniah chapter 3, and then we explain Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Zephan, Sophan, Zephan mean mystery of Yah, the mystery of God. It says that in the last days, the mystery of God would be fulfilled in the last days. So these, this is also an important sign of the so-called, quote, last days and time of the Gentile world dominion. This is why when we hear about the economy in Europe, the EU is on the edge of the abyss. Abyssinia? I'll be seeing you. They're on the age of the abyss and the American economy. What's going to happen? And Obama can't turn around. I mean, that's, you know, the, the economic problem is so far beyond Obama. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting that they always have this saying that when things get all brought down, you know, they always put a black man there. And this is another kind of a, a, a case in point of that. But back to the scriptures. Verse 10 says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, my suppliants, those who supplicate to me, even the daughter of my dispersed, the daughter of my dispersed. So it's speaking about Ethiopia, the rivers of Ethiopia, suppliants, a dispersion, a diaspora, and we are that diaspora, the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering, shall bring mine offering. So there will be a connection between a certain dispersed people who he will turn to a pure language. Now, the testimony that we have of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, we're talking about the original, the, the authentic, the genuine thing, the genuine article going back to 1937 and Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan, all right? Put the Garveyism and t all, all that, put that out of mind for a moment. We're talking about the works of Ketamawi Hadis Salase and the fulfillment of prophecy. It says, In that day thou shalt not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. So Yahweh is saying that th these people who are the dispersed, that they had transgressed, they are amongst the people, and our ancestors had transgressed against the Almighty God. This is the real reason or context of our enslavement and our captivity to the Gentiles, to the so-called Anglo-Europeans. It's not for all these BS and false reasons that many people have been taught and they've learned about in school or his, his story book, so forth and so on. But the real reasons is part of our divine, at the root of our divine heritage and our ancient Ethiopian culture. So here it says, In that day thou shalt not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then 
I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, in our Ethiopianism and being black pride. They're gonna take out. He's gonna take out of the midst of us those who are just proud about. You know those folks that is black, black, black. Yeah, Ethiopian black, but they're not really about Yahweh's way. Either it's about the black stuff, you know what I mean? It's a pride thing so they can, you know, stick up their chest, you know what I mean, to the white man and say, yes, we got something too. But they don't really recognize the mystery of God in Christ. They haven't submitted themselves to the truth. So those are going to be taken out, them that rejoice in thy pride. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. So it points to a time when, our people were hoardy because of the holy mountain, whether in Jerusalem or even Ethiopia, in a sense. There's many who have been haughty, you understand, and even thereby naughty, you understand, due to the holy mountain. But it says, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. They shall trust in the name of Yahweh. This is what we surprise folks like. How are a whole bunch of black folks, whether in the Americas or especially in the Caribbean, who all of a sudden be Rastafari and all of a sudden be, be about Ethiopia and even from the 1930s learning Amharic? We still have to con continue with the testimony of, um, I think it was a 10-year-old um, Edna Lewis. You remember we had talked about her testimony. I think we still have some of the documentation right here. Let's, let's let's show that right here. Now, this is this is the man right here that His Majesty sent, Doctor Malaku Emanuel Bayan. You see what I'm saying? Unfortunately, more people know about um, Garvey and Garvey this and Garvey that, Marcus Garvey, and not the one whom His Majesty sent. You see, so that 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 is a, you know, are you just haughty? Are you naughty? Are you about, you know, you got pride about Ethiopia, but you're not really submitting to the will of his imperial majesty in Christ? You see, you got to ask the right question, brothers and sisters. Let's get to this right here. This is some, 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 some uh, copies, and we've, oh, here's the story right here. But before we get to that, just that prophecy about the nations, this is majesty right here. This is from the voice of Ethiopia, right? voice of Ethiopia, and this is back 1930, 37. People think we're just making up something now concerning his majesty in Ethiopia, but he was a prophet, or his, his, his prophetic spirit was recognized even from such a time, in particular with this particular area of Zephaniah, where it talks about in Zephaniah 3 and 8, it speaks about that the Lord will rise up to the prey. Notice the language there, the prey like a lion, often in the scripture, and I think even in this particular book, where Yahweh or Jah or Jehovah compares himself to a lion, as in the Moa and Bethesem and Negeda Yehuda, as in the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. But this is this particular testimony right here on the language. We, we touched on it briefly before in another video. This is 10-year-old... This is Edna Lewis, right? And we want to just share at this particular point concerning the language, how this is a fulfillment. This was uh, May 14th, night, Saturday, the Sabbath day, Saturday, May 14th, 1938, and how we have a fulfillment of this particular prophetic word from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses in particular 9 and 10, where it says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language, in other words, a purified language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants. See, when you go beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, you're going from East Africa to West Africa. And that's how our peoples ended up in West Africa. You, you can look from at Babylon to Timbuktu and some other documentations like that. Um, and you can get the evidence, the historical evidence of that. So from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter 
of my disperse. So there's a disperse. There, there's, there's two sets of people. There's the Ethiopians at home, and there's the Ethiopians in the diaspora. But the ones in the diaspora have been robbed of their knowledge of the knowledge of their self. They believe themselves as so-called niggers and, and, and coloreds and, and all other sort of um, coons and, and all other sort of uh, bywords. But the nigger is the main one, the Niger or nigger. You know niggers in the Bible, you know that. Simon the, the Niger or Simon the nigger. It's right there in the Bible. I think he helped Christ carry, a nigger helped Christ carry his cross. Ain't that something? Or maybe he was Nigerian. So something to think about, really. You see in the Bible, don't expect the white man, the white man to really go into it. He's kind of selfish. You know what I'm saying? He's just looking, he's looking at his own. You, you know what I mean? Not really doing the will of, of our God and Father. But here it says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplicants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. Now here we have a letter from a 10-year-old. And there's a quote here. And this article is by the wife of... Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, the wife of this man right here, of this man right here, Dr. Bayan, his wife, his African-American wife, wrote this particular article in 1948 in the voice of Ethiopia, and the section is called Friends of Ethiopia, Far and Near, by Dorothy H. Bayan, or Bayan. A letter from a 10-year-old, quote, and a little child shall lead them, end quote. The following is from a 10-year-old girl now ill in the hospital, one of the ardent young workers in the cause of Ethiopia. She and her brother, James Lewis, were always at the meetings and were studying Amharic, and now it says right here, studying Amharic, um, she did all she could to interest her schoolmates in this great cause. The grown-ups everywhere might well take a lesson from little Edna Lewis. We hope that before long she will be completely restored and will be with us again kind of curious, you know, you know, when, we, when you read these historical, these historical excerpts, like, whatever happened to this girl, you know what I mean, um, did, did she recover, was she able to see her, her, her prayers, and her um, hopes fulfilled, and she, she discusses that in this particular article right here, she says, um, this is her, her letter, this is, my dear Mr. Amadou, my dear Mr. Amadou, Part of the article is cut off, but we'll, we'll try to put in the words where we can. Um, she says, um, I am so sorry I didn't write before. Words cannot express how I miss you and my Ethiopian friends. I thank you dearly for sending the voice of Ethiopia. Ethiopia. You make me very happy and feel like real Ethiopia. I think she says, uh, please, or tell Mr. and Mrs. Bayan, uh, I am, I think, very sorry I am not able to sell the voice of Ethiopia. But after I finish, but after I finish reading, I let a girl named, I think, Grace see it. She enjoys reading it very much. You don't know how happy I was when I looked at the headline and saw 3,000 Italians wiped out. <laughs> now, you have to remember, with some of the fascists, not just regular Italian folks, but people who went there to kill, maim, and massacre, and steal. Let's understand that. So she was so happy when she saw that headline. They had to be wiped out because God does not leave justice undone. I hope God will help wipe all out and Ethiopia shall be free. And amen. 
I miss coming to meetings. I hope to get well so I can be with my Ethiopian friends again. I hope the black people are waking up and joining the Ethiopian World Federation. I hope someday all black people will be free and Ethiopia will also be free and the head of all nations and that his majesty will always will be always the king of Ethiopia and the king of Africa. In the paper, it shows a picture of Ethiopia stretching forth her hands to God. And I know God will hear her because God gave her Africa and it shall not be taken. I hope the organization keeps up the good work. I send love to my Ethiopian friends and tell them not to lose faith in Ethiopia because it is going to be free. Your Ethiopian friend, Edna Lewis. Now, a girl like this, a 10-year-old girl like this, back, and there's other testimonies throughout the voice of Ethiopia that test, I mean, this is 1930 we're talking about. You understand? May God bless the soul of Edna Lewis. Ethiopians, and if Edna Lewis is any relation to y'all or any of y'all, please get in contact with us. We'd just like to hear any more testimony, you know, good, bad, or otherwise. Please, please share that. Um, we pointed this article out because she was studying Amharic, 10 years old, 10 years old, back in 1930-something. And, and there's very few colleges, even black colleges and universities. Some of them do. Some of them have started um, Amharic language program. You know what I'm saying? But we are, we are more than 70 years, 70 years behind. You understand? 70 years behind this particular prophecy. But we can see how the prophecy concerning our first language and the pure language, speaking of the, the Ethiopic and the purified tongue of the Amharic, was being learned even in such a time. In fact, if you look right here, here's another testimony from July 17th, Saturday, July uh, 17th, 1937. This is from the voice of Ethiopia, a postcard for His Imperial Majesty in the Amharic, a translation of it right there. And then on this side, this is where Dr. Bayan, Malaku Bayan, was teaching our people, the Afro-Americans and the other blacks in the West, teaching them the royal language, teaching them Amharic, as you see right there. 1937. 1937. I want you to make note of it because there's a lot of uh, college educated and people who are about the black, black cause, so forth and so on, who don't even know this. You understand? And, and we're not blaming them for not knowing it. But like the song says, now that we found love, what are we going to do with it? You know, now that we found the love of God in Christ manifest to us, what are we going to do about it? And this is another article from July 3rd. So this is before then, July 3rd, Saturday, July 3rd, 1937 another um, Amharic lesson. So in every week's paper we can see every every publication of it there was an Amharic lesson. All right? And then that's a subscription right there. All right? So um, it's very important for us to, to recognize here yeah, that was lesson four and the first one was lesson six which had the pronunciation the literal meaning of each word and a trans and a translation. So what we wanted to show first of all was the biblical the, the, the scripture prophecy, what the scripture says concerning us, the diaspora, and the importance of language, how language is very, very it's, it's the key thing. Otherwise, Slick Willie, Slick Willie Lynch wouldn't have mentioned it at the top of his list. You know, he mentioned language. You understand that, that, that the language was very important to suppress from us 
the knowledge both of Masa's language, i.e. the English language, as well as our own language. But they had a plan, and Yah or Jah had a plan, and surely Yah or Jah is the best of all planets. And we see his plan being fulfilled both scripturally here, right, as well as in our history. Even though they've suppressed much of this history concerning the Ethiopian World Federation, it's out there. The truth is out there. And the truth shall even rise from the earth again. That is also prophecy and actuality. So let's just finish these two verses, which are part of this particular bait right here. After um, my holy mountain, it says, Verse 12, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. They shall trust in the name of Yahweh, he who is who he is, who revealed and manifests himself in the person of Rastafari, Mekonin, Moa, Andesa, Zeima, Negede, Yehuda, Edomawi, Haile Selassie, Siyuma, Egeziyabi, Hed Negusa, Negesi, the Ethiopia. Now, it's very important for us just to, before we finish the verse 13, before we get to, to 13, let's just look at this right here. I find this to be interesting because some, you know, some of our Rastafari brethren and sister, and, you know, um, I'm sure they, as they say, quote, mean well, you know, um, but they either don't know or are, are disregard the true um, uh, titulary or protocol, the protocol of Kedamawi Hala Selassie's name. There's other videos where we've touched on this particular matter, but let's just look at the history that we as a people are without excuse because this knowledge already was taught to us back in 1937. You understand? More than 70 years ago, right here where there was a birthday greeting, birthday greetings were being sent to His Majesty, special cards with the Ethiopian colors are now available at the headquarters, 2352 7th Avenue, New York, New York. This is 1937, mind you. These cards be an inspiring poem in Amharic. They are already addressed to His Majesty, and all that is necessary is for the, re, uh, for the sender to sign his name and full address, place on it a three-cent stamp. Imagine postage was three cents and mail. The cost of the card is five cents each, so less than ten cents to send a greeting to His Imperial Majesty. The translation of the Amharic writing at the top of the front is as follows. It says, and this is the proper protocol of His Majesty. And as for us as Rastafari to make special note of this, quote, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah, Hila Selassie I, or Hila Selassie I, elect of God, king of kings, then it says emperor of Ethiopia, may the day of your birth be glorified. Congratulations on the date of your birth, end quote. The poem will be appreciated by our students who will soon be able to read it in the original Amharic, in the original Amharic. So um, that is the proper protocol for His Majesty's name. Conquering lion from or of the tribe of Judah, Moa Andesa Zaima Negeda Yehuda, Haile Selassie I or Haile Selassie I, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, elect of God, Siyuma Egeziari Her, king of kings, Kama, Emperor of Ethiopia. It's very interesting what Malaku Bey uh, did right here because Emperor is the western of uh, Impira of, of, of Negusa Neges. So Bamarinya, or from the Gutters, it's Negusa Neges Ze Ethiopia, which may be fully or better translated as Malaku Bey and translated here as King of Kings, Emperor, which is that is to say, Emperor of Ethiopia in German documents and certain European nations, they actually call his majesty Kaiser. He's actually Kaiser because that is how they say King of Kings or Emperor. 
they they don't really have king of kings in the same in the European, you know. So it's the emperor comes from more the European tradition or the Roman tradition, but literally it is king of kings, Negusa, Negest, Ze, Ethiopia. So those four lines, we can say those four lines compose the proper protocol of identifying his imperial majesty. And it's about honor for us to learn it as well as to invoke it and, and to correct ones and ones where necessary um, and where possible. But let's continue with verse 13 now, just to sum this up with verse 13. So verse 13, Zephaniah, the mystery of Yah, the mystery of Jah, chapter 3, verse 13. It says the remnant, now speaking about this remnant, remember it was dispersed in verse 10 now at verse 13. It's the remnant of Israel, of Israel, because although we are Ethiopian, Ethiopian Hebrews, we are Israel, Amos 9 and 7. For aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Children, children, we are children, you understand, of Ethiopia, and we are likened to the children of Israel. So when it says the remnant of Israel, it is speaking of us, the so-called black sheep of the family. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, shall not rebel, shall not do iniquity, which is rebellion, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. And none shall make them afraid. Now, um, there's a little additional part right here, and I, I, the Spirit is saying to just go forward with this, because this is speaking about in Zephaniah the conversion of the peoples. Is stated out of a usual prophetic, a prophetic order in which the blessing of Israel and the setting up of the kingdom, it precedes, it, pre, it precedes the conversion of the Gentiles. In other words, the non-Ethiopian black peoples, because there's many who have been converted to the light of Rastafari, to the light of his imperial majesty. But first, the kingdom had to be set up. In other words, the revelation of Moa on Bessa Zeima Negeri Yehuda. Now, there's some prophetical link here with Zechariah, you understand, with Zechariah's um, 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 prophecy. But the passage gives clear testimony as to when the conversion of the nations will occur. It is after the smiting, after the smiting of the nations. Now, it's clear when we look at what occurred in World War II, there was a great smiting of the nations. But what is not so clear is that at the root of it was Ethiopia, was Ethiopia. So if they had listened to his imperial majesty, Kedemawi Hadassalasi, then what occurred, World War II, all the death and destruction, would have most likely been averted. But because they, they did not listen to that prophetic word and ridiculed it, they had to go through um, the anger, the fierce anger and indignation, and there was a new assembling of the nations, which Ethiopia had an honorable place in the original United Nations because of how she was that first martyr, and His Majesty was that symbol of that first martyr, you understand, who overcame it five years to the very day, May 5th, 1941. And then that, 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 that connects with the Georgis and, and George part that we have we were touching on um, in some other videos. But here's a message. Here's the, here's the message that speaks about the kingdom blessing of Israel. It says, Sing, verse 14, Sing, O daughter of Zion, of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. Don't be half-hearted. Rejoice completely, O daughter of Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Yahweh, Jah, if you please, hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. He has cast out. Now, you see the prophetic connection between the historical events and the fulfillment that the Lord, or Yahweh, Jah, hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel. So now you know that link now between true imperial Ethiopia 
and the the prophetic biblical Israel, it says the king of Israel. Even the Lord, even Yahweh, even he who is who he is, or Moa'an Bethesda Emenegeda Yehuda, is in the midst of thee, in Addis Ababa, in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. And what's interesting is this, that particular generation, 40 years of, 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 of peace, 40 years of progress, 40 years of development until another generation came about, and that's the careless Ethiopians at home as well as abroad. You see, because a sword is a double-edged sword, so it cuts when it goes in, it cuts when it comes out. So just where you say the careless Ethiopians of the Ethiopians at home, there was also a lot of careless Ethiopians abroad because if they were not careless, ones would have cared more about the Ethiopian World Federation and those particular words, and things would have not got to the bottom of the barrel falling out as it has in this present time. Verse 16, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not, and to Zion, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, Hayal, Hayal. Haile Selassie. He will save in Yehoshua through the good news of his son, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, Jah love. He will joy over thee with singing, with song. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, notice what it's saying, who are of thee, who are related and somehow of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. Where we have the first so called repat uh, um, 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 repatriation that occurred in that time, in those days, in the 30s and in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, uh, in the 70s, the first part of the 70s. You see, when, when there was the creeping coup, the Satanistic coup against his imperial majesty, that's when we went into another manifestation of prophecy. And gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame, where they have been put to, to shame. Verse 20, to complete the chapter, and, and thus the book, the prophetic book, Tinbete Sophonius, or, or the prophecy of Zephaniah, the mystery of Yah. It says, at that time will I bring you again. Repatriation, again, patriation, even in the time that I will gather you, for I will make you a name, a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity, when he turns back our captivity before your eyes, saith Yod Hey, Wow Hey, saith Yahweh, he who is. Who he is, who has revealed himself in the person of our Lord and Savior, revealed through Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the King of Kings of East, of Ethiopia, and the King of Israel as well. If you understand that, that's also one of his titles. You know, now people say, well, he took these titles to himself. It is false. It is false. See, they don't have the answers because they're not asking the right questions. And they're not, they're not, they're not um, accepting the, the proof, the record, because they have their own imagination. You understand? Their vain imagination. As I says, why do they imagine vain things? So language is, this is all to really just talk about language for a moment. See, we have to understand the importance of language, the very importance of, of language. Most of us will say Christ. Christ, but don't understand Messiah. That even the Bible says, interpret it. We have found the Messiah. You understand? Or we found the Christ, interpreted Messiah. But what does it mean? 
what's the true root and the true meaning and true context. That's why a lot of folks have a little bit of difficulty when we say his majesty is Christ and his kingly character. Part of it is because they're lost in translation or mistranslation, let's call it, let, let's call it, um, let's call it what it, what it is. In fact, it's right here in verse 41, of St. John, the Gospel, chapter 1, verse 41, it says, He first findeth his own brother Simon or Simeon, and saith to him, We have found the Messiah. We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So when one say Jesus Christ, they are dealing with an interpretation. But do they even understand or comprehend or have the knowledge of what the interpretation is based on? What does the interpretation mean and what has it been interpreted from? This is why Christ would say in the, um, in the very uh, next um, couple of chapters, I think chapter 4, 4 and 22, he says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. I and I know what I and I worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of Yehuda. Moa and Bessa the Emma Negeda. Yehuda. Salvation is of Jah's praise. That's what Judah means, the praise of Yah, the praise of Jah. There's a psalm, some of you all probably know this psalm, where it says that, um, that, that God is, 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 is known in Judah, his name is great in Israel. It says that his name is great among Israel and even the modern Israelites today. You understand? But he's known in Judah. You see, he is known in Judah. So, the, so that link there is very important. Another area we want to give you right here on language. This is why we just backing up the importance of us learning once again the, the, the Ethiopic. How is Ethiopic the first language? See, if you don't understand how Ethiopic is, is our first language and is the first language, then you might not be able to properly comprehend how the royal and hark of Negusa Neges, of the King of Kings, is the pure language that is spoken of in Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Now, in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the events of that day, at verse uh, 15, it says, And he said to them, now, this is the Red Letter Bible, so this is to say when, when Yeshua, Yeshua said these words. That means for us they have more import more authority. We study them to believe because it's his testimony that we are to keep as true um, um, Messiahites or as Christian on this day as Rastafari, true and faithful. It says, go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the good news. To who? To just a couple of people, to your brethren, to people that you know, that you like? No, it says to every creature, to every creature. He that believeth or he that mamens, he that accepts, admits the truth from the, the root of, of, of the words. See, belief is another translation, another lost in translation, you know. So if you're dealing with the translation, you are subject to, to a lot of um, a lot of deception based on the be lie ease, the be lie ease. But when you now get to the root of the matter, you understand, know you recognize we're dealing with the Amen. The Amen. The Amen is at the root or Mammon at the root of the mistranslation be lie ease. So either you could deal with Amen or you can deal with be lie ease. But it says he that Amen's and is bap Ties, or is bathed or immersed, immersed, not to get a little sprinkling of knowledge, a little sprinkling of, of our divine heritage, but to be immersed in our divine heritage shall be saved, shall be saved, shall have salvation, preservation, immunity even from the judgment to come. But on the other hand, Negurgen, he that does not amen, 
that does not amen, in other words, those who still deal with belayif, he that does not amen or amens not shall be what? Damned. Shall be damned. Yeah, that means curse. That means judge. Have no immunity. Subject to the full weight of the written of the written judgment. You know, people can say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, you, you don't be naive in that. You be naive in that. You understand? And these signs, now they, these are the signs we should be looking for. Some say these are the marks of the true Christian, the mature Messiahite. And these signs shall follow them that, once again, you know, you're going to see the word be naive, but you should recognize now that is amen, the word amen. And you'll find Amen. The beginning of your Amen study should be Revelation. It should be about, you need a revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Check out Amen there. And then get into the, the Hebraic. In other words, study what the Hebrew, look in your Strong's Concordance. You understand? And, or you can see it online, Strong's Concordance or the, the Elijah, Eli, Eliyahu Concordance lexicon online, the Blue Letter Bible. There's a lot of links we've pointed out elsewhere. So please take advantage of it. These things are free. Even though education is quite costly, there are a lot of free resources out there. Take, make, take and make good advantage of it. And these signs shall follow them that are main. In my name, in my Shem, in my Sim, in my Shem, shall they cast out Diablos Aganent. Shall they cast out devils, um, 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 interdimensional evil entities, spiritual entities, aliens, all these devils, you know, we could, we're going to get into a teaching on that right there, but on the basic level, cast out devils. Cast out the devils, a liar, slander, but he has aganent, it seems about demons. You understand? Um, um, repressive alien forces, if you, if, if, you can, if you can receive that. They, but here's the key. They shall speak with what? New tongues. In other words, renewed tongues or purified tongues. That means not just that they're speaking a language, just, just being fluent with language, but the, 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 the language is the comprehension of the word, is the understanding or the overstanding of the word will be renewed. Just like when we just touched on be naive, and we said it's not those who be naive. That's the problem right there. Those who be naive, you understand, are damned. But those who have amen, true and faithful witness, they are the ones who have access to salvation. So here it links now speaking with new tongues or renewed tongues. They shall take up serpents. Now, so, you know, there's a lot of videos out there with these guys taking physical serpents. They're on that physical level because they don't recognize the trinity, the spirit, the soul, and the body. So the first thing that they go for is, is body and soul because they're not being guided by the Holy Spirit. So let's understand that it's not just speaking about physical serpents because Christ even says he's using earthly verbal hieroglyphics to point to the metaphysical or the spiritual reality. If you don't understand the earthly things, how can you understand the heavenly, the heavenly things? It's a metaphor. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, that's another thing. Some people say, I believe this, and they're going to drink some, some strychnine or other kind of poison, and, 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 and many, many have died like that because they have been lost in translation. See, that's another example of getting lost in translation. It's not speaking about going out there and tempting the Spirit of God, you know, but they drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, there's been so much um, additional knowledge about metaphysical, even prana and and other metaphysical techniques, people understanding chakras and, and subtle meridians and pathways and, and the importance of breath and breathing and can see auras. And a lot of these things that are for the West and the Gentiles, new discoveries. But then when we put it into proper context, we get to recognize that's where the ancients and that's where the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's where they were coming from to the very beginning. It's like Christ is trying to speak about all this holistic metaphysical knowledge 2,000 years ago. And, you know, seeing they're not getting it, this is why he said if you can't understand the, the, the earthly things, these earthly examples, how are you going to be able to understand the spiritual examples? 
So instead of looking at it as a so-called new thing, it's to renew your mind. That says to be transformed, not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing of, of your think differently, in other words, think differently think differently, but in order to even begin to think differently, you know, they, they said like the computer is only as good as the information that's put into it, so you're going to have to put better information, you understand, know, into, into your like hard drive. This is one reason why his majesty teaches us that education, education is the key, and for us, language is very, very important. The language is very, very important. And in order to help our brothers and sisters, let's begin with the first. Let's go back to the, the foundation, the beginning. And this document here, Ethiopic, we present this Ethiopic, the first language, is now available. www.lojsociety.org. Get a copy today. All right, my brothers and sisters, more to come on this important subject matter. Shalom. Ras Tafari.